So this is the astrological forecast for November 2021. It's about um, midday UK time on the 1st of November as I record this. <sighs> Firstly, a number of people have said to me, why don't you put your comments back on your YouTube channel? I'm going, no. It's such a pleasure not having to read comments. 90% of the comments were lovely, but some of the hatred, the vitriol, the trolling, was just so abusive, I just couldn't deal with it anymore. I've, I've put up with, with it for, for 12 years, I'm not doing it anymore. And it's such a relief not to do it, so I'm afraid the comments are gonna be staying off. So if I'm not getting the comments and I'm not bothered about the number of views, why am I doing it? Because I love my work. I love doing astrology. It's my passion. It, without astrology, I'd be dead by now. I don't see astrology as in it anymore. I see it as a she, it has valence, it has a life force. She keeps me going. November, 2021. It's rock and roll time, folks. Get your surfboards ready, get your roller skates on. It's gonna be a bit crazy. A number of things happening this month. Neptune is going to be standing still at the very end of the month, actually stands still on the 1st of December, but it will be the 30th of November when it stands still in some countries. It's that close to the end of the month. Not so worried about Neptune, although he's continuing to affect a lot of people. Every other planet in the sky is really interesting. Let's start with the new moon at 9 9 15 p.m uk time on saturday uh thursday the 4th of november the sun and moon in the sky will be together exactly opposite uranus seven minutes of one degree so that's about one in three thousand five hundred that's close and uranus is so unpredictable you cannot say whether this is going to be stimulating, innovative, original, exciting, fun, adventurous, futuristic, novel, or whether it's going to be chaos, disorder, unpredictability, drama, anarchy, probably a mixture of it all. But the world's going to change in the next few days. There's going to be something that's going to make everybody sit up and go, wow, I didn't see that coming. And it may not happen exactly at that time. But Uranus tends to work pretty much close to the time. So I do suspect something to happen significant within 24 hours of that new moon. I hope I eat a humble pie and that if anything does happen, it's good. And if nothing happens, I will grovel. But I'm pretty sure on this one. This is immediately followed by Mercury leaving Libra and moving into Scorpio late in the evening UK time on Friday the 5th of November. Uh, on the same day, Venus will move into Capricorn around midday-ish UK time on the 5th of November. So there's a big shift of energy. The new moon followed by both Mercury and Venus changing sign within 24 hours. So it does seem as if there's going to be a lot of changes happening around that 4th, 5th of November period of time. This is then immediately followed, not immediately, but very quickly followed by the most difficult time of the month. As Mercury moves into Scorpio, with Mars having moved into Scorpio already at the very end of October, Mercury and Mars come together over a three-day period, the 9th, 10th, 11th of November. Squaring Saturn in Aquarius. And on the 10th of November, in the afternoon, evening UK time, the moon in the sky will also be in Aquarius, conjuncting Saturn in the afternoon, mid, mid late afternoon. So there's gonna come a time on the 10th of November where we're gonna have the moon and Saturn pretty much exactly square Mercury and Mars from Aquarius to Scorpio. This is not flexible. This is not tolerant, it is not transient. It is acute, sharp, militaristic. It is explosive. Mercury conjunct Mars in Scorpio can get very, very determined. It will not 
change its mind unless it wants to. It will not yield. It will not surrender and it will stick to its guns. Moon conjunct Saturn in Aquarius can be the epitome of um, detachedness, impersonality, objectivity. It seems to me that we're heading into a pretty crazy time as we get into the first 10, 12 days of November. And not only around the new moon on the 4th, but also at the time of this big square around the 10th. And I'll cover myself on this when I say the 8th to the 12th, but particularly around the 10th, it does seem as if there's some really challenging energy kicking in. Now, after this, things begin to balance out a little bit more. Mars will then oppose Uranus strongly, exactly even, on the 18th of November. Mars opposite Uranus. Mars in Scorpio opposite Uranus and Taurus. Again, there's going to be big changes. And I expect this is equally as explosive, although I don't mean perhaps so literally in, in this case, because I've got a funny feeling this has got more to do with um, corporate, governmental, fiscal, bank stuff, things like this but we'll see. And this is the day before the partial eclipse of the moon. The eclipse of the moon will be on the 19th of October, uh, 19th of November, I'm sorry, around about um, 9 a.m. UK time. And it will be a partial eclipse. The node is quite close to the moon, so a good proportion of the moon is going to be obscured, occluded depending on what latitude you are and what time of day you're, you're seeing it. For example, we won't be seeing it in the UK because the sun would have risen and the moon would have set. But uh, in, in, in the Americas, you'll see it. Over the Western Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific, you'll see it. Most of the Pacific will see it. Now, half the moon, maybe a bit under half the moon will be visible. The rest will be a kind of dull orange or brown, the bit that's occluded. And depending on the quality of the air and the location where you're seeing it, it might be just a perfect crescent. There'll be some good pictures. But this, this eclipse of the moon, on the one hand, eclipses of the moon are never my favorite things. I would never describe them in glowing and favorable terms, but it will be pretty much strongly trying Pluto. So I don't see it as a negative thing, even though Mars in the sky will be opposite Uranus at that time. It is worthy of note that Mercury will also be quite close to the sun as it opposes the moon. So I actually see this as a relatively favorable, if you're gonna get a favorable eclipse, this is a good one because of its trying to Pluto. And as we get towards the end of the month, there seems to be this easing of gravity and pressure, temporarily at least until we get into early December, because in early December there will be a total eclipse of the Sun, and then Mars will be squaring Jupiter, Saturn will square Uranus in December. We are heading into a two-month period, which in many ways is summarizing the last two years in many different ways. So this is why I'm saying rock and roll, you know, surfboard oiled, skates on, be Teflon coated, don't let anything stick to you. And because the new moon is in Scorpio, opposite Uranus, fixed signs. The full moon is in Taurus, opposite the sun in Scorpio, fixed signs. The moon conjunct Saturn, square Mercury conjunct Mars, it's in Aquarius and Scorpio, fixed signs. Mars opposite Uranus, Taurus to Scorpio, fixed signs. Thing about fixed signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, they're not flexible. They can be incredibly stubborn and dogmatic. They also supply power, drive, energy, resilience, determination, thoroughness and perseverance and stubbornness. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty interesting month. And I do expect big changes in the world. A number of figure heads are going to fall sooner rather than later. There's going to be one or two probably military interventions somewhere along the line. And the world's going to be 
it's already a very different place to the way it was two years ago. And those people who think they can go back to the world the way it was two years ago are dreaming. It's going to be a lot different again in two months time, even in one month's time. So as far as November 2021 goes, folks, make sure you're well oiled. Don't don't get into arguments. Walk away. Say, look, I'm going to go away and think about it. Don't let your buttons get pushed. It's going to be so easy for polarization this month. It's going to be so easy for people to go, Mike makes right, my way or no way. Completely the wrong attitude. Find the middle path. And if you can't do that, keep your peace. Catch you next time. Bye.